If you've ever flown a helicopter, I think you'll agree that it's absolutely amazing. The feeling you get when you're up in the sky and your bubble is just indescribable. It's also a fast, efficient and fun way to get from A to B. But as with any kind of transportation, it comes with risks. And the best way to avoid an accident is to know and learn about the different hazardous flight conditions. The goal of this short video series is to study the different hazardous flight conditions to learn how to recognize them, how to avoid them, and most of all, know how to get out of them if by some unfortunate circumstances you find yourself in a difficult situation. In this first video, we'll take a look at the vortex ring state. So how do we define the vortex ring state? It's a situation in flight creating a turbulent ring state that envelops the main rotor, causing considerable loss of lift. In other words, the vortex ring state is a condition where you lose lift and the helicopter can literally fall out of the sky. To put you in this situation, I'd like you to imagine that we're two pilots on a weekend trip. We've been invited to a friend's house in the countryside. Yesterday evening, we were very studious and did all our flight preparation thoroughly. We're flying along happily, the navigation went superbly, all according to plan, and here we are, we found the house and we're really chuffed with ourselves. Know that feeling? Our friends are in the garden waving profusely as we're circling and doing our pre-landing checks exactly the way we were taught. There is very little wind, there are no obstacles in or around our landing spot, and we reckon it's all good to go ahead and land safely. Seeing that there are trees all around the property, we're going to have to do a steep approach. We start the descent. We're on finals. All of a sudden, the helicopter starts to vibrate unusually. Ah, it's a bit strange, but no worries. We presume it's just because we have slowed down to below translational lift. And to slow the helicopter's descent, we raise the collective slightly. It shudders even more. The controls go all sloppy. The helicopter starts yawing, the rate of descent increases, we raise the collective more to go up instead of down and BOOM! The helicopter hits the ground. We look at each other, think how lucky we are to be alive, and wonder, and wonder what, the, what heck the heck happened. happened. Okay, so what really did happen? Why did we fall? Let's start at the approach. Everything was going well. In normal flight, the airflow comes from above, passes through the rotor disc and is pushed out below the helicopter. In other words, the induced flow. At the rotor tips, there is a bit of air that is aerodynamically pushed up around the blades, creating small vortices, just like it does on the wings of an aeroplane. These vortices increase drag and reduce lift slightly, but it's a normal flight condition. When the helicopter is going forward, the airflow is pushed below and left out behind the helicopter. But when we slow down, or even more so in a hover, the airflow is pushed underneath and the helicopter just sits on top of it. So when we arrived at our friend's house and we were on finals, we were so excited to get there quickly to pop the champagne and get on with the party, we were coming in with a rate of descent far too high. We were descending too quickly and our helicopter got caught up in its own induced flow. The air rushing over the blade tips started increasing the size of the vortices, which in turn reduced the efficiency of the blades. As we started sinking, the air underneath us started passing through the center of the rotor disc. And as you may know, the rotational speed at the blade root is lower than the rotational speed at the blade tip. To compensate, the blade is designed with a slight twist called washout. And the highest angle of incidence is at the root. So in a state of vortex, the air passing through the center of the rotor disc causes the angle of attack to increase even more and this part of the rotor disc stalls, causing further loss of lift. By raising the collective, we increase the angle of attack even further, which just worsened the effect. The loss of lift on both ends of the blades was increasing and the lift that was left in between the vortices was decreasing, accentuating the descent rate to a fall. The dangers of a vortex ring state is the unexpected increasing descent rate. There is also the uncontrollable yaw and the reduced effectiveness of control input. 
In a situation where you have a sudden loss of height and the helicopter is sinking, what do you think the instinctive reaction is going to be? Yeah, you're going to want to raise the collective to climb. And this just makes the situation worse and can lead to a fatal accident. So in order to avoid this happening, you need to know exactly how you get into a vortex ring state in the first place. The speed of the helicopter has to be below that of effective translational lift. So in a Robinson helicopter, that's about 30 knots. The descent rate needs to be more than 300 feet per minute, and there has to be more than 20% power applied. Factors increasing the risk where you really need to be careful are high angled approaches, tailwind approaches, vertical descents out of ground effect, or badly controlling your height and not keeping straight and level while hovering out of ground effect. And then basically, all flights with very limited power available, where it's too hot and you're too high and or too heavy. Remember the golden rule to avoid the vortex ring state. Reduce your descent rate to less than 300 feet per minute before reducing your speed to less than 30 knots. Of course, there are other precautions or habits you can adopt, like avoiding hovers out of ground effect, always knowing the wind direction, and doing approaches and landings upwind when possible, and lastly, good flight planning and knowing your aircraft's limitations is a must. Now, if we unexpectedly find ourselves in a vortex ring state, instead of panicking, what are we supposed to do? It's not rocket science. We just have to get ourselves out of that mass of turbulent air. One way of doing it, and only if you have enough height, is to do an auto-rotation. In auto-rotation, we reduce the power and the airflow is completely reversed, meaning that it flows from below the rotor disc and out above, so the phenomena is immediately removed. Another method that we learned during our flight training is to lower the collective slightly with forward cyclic to fly forwards out of the vortex. It's quite an intuitive maneuver. Let's watch the student with his instructor. It's a clip published by helicoptertrainingvideos.com. They're at 6,000 feet. The instructor does a demo and then the student has a go. Things to look out for are the airspeed indicator, the trim strings, the abnormal shuddering, and watch the vertical speed indicator closely. Okay, now start easing back, lowering collective. Just like a quick stop if you like, really. Okay, okay airspeed's bleeding away, airspeed's bleeding away. Keep bleeding away. There. There's our zero airspeed. Now we're starting to get some shudders, right? The SI, see the trim strings just dropped? There we are, we're in it. So, lower collective, ease forward, recovering. Airspeed's gonna start coming. There it is, up collective, loose grip, throttle, left pedal, check power, climb out. I'll get that all the way, you wanna get it to zero. See where that 20 is? You can't really see because of this, but there's a 15 and a zero. You wanna get it all the way pegged to the zero. So keep half cyclic, keep half cyclic, keep coming back. speed more half cyclic so we've already got the descent in so that's good so we're halfway there descent rates in air speeds in starting to get some weird shutters right okay so let's recover lower collective push forward hold that attitude for a second wait for it air speeds building keep the trim right pedal now up collective up collective climb out good the third method is extremely effective it's the Bouchard recovery technique developed by an internationally known Swiss pilot and founder of the Bouchard Recovery Aviation Safety Foundation. It uses the tail rotor thrust to slide out of the vortex ring state sideways. So in a Robinson helicopter, that would be up collective, left pedal and cyclic right. Here we can see the technique excellently demonstrated in a Lama helicopter. Just a note, in a Lama you exit out left due to the power pedal being opposite to that of a Robinson. If you'd like to watch the whole video, I'll put a link in the description below.
there you have it. I hope these explanations were useful to you. Feel free to leave your comments and personal experiences. It's all good for the helicopter pilot community. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. Fly safe and see you soon on Fly High.